Hey, what's up guys? This is part two of my series on how to record drums. And in this video, we're going to be looking at mic placements, which is one of those things that can be really important, but it's also one of those things that can drive you crazy and make you feel like you have no clue what you're doing. So I'm just gonna try to make this as simple as possible and show you a few principles I follow to get the best sound I can uh, from my recordings. All right, let's get started. All right, cool, let's begin with the overheads. Now, when I was new to recording, I thought that the close mics were where all the sound is coming from, but after doing this for a while, I've come to realize that the majority of your sound is coming from the overheads. So you really wanna spend a lot of time trying to get those as good as you can. Now, there's a lot of different overhead miking techniques. You got XY, Space Pair, Recorder Man, Glenn Johns, etc. And I encourage you guys to experiment with different configurations to see what works for you. I've personally kind of settled on this uh, Space Pair configuration, mainly because I like the stereo width that it gives me in the mix. And it also frees up some space behind my kit for other things like cameras and lights and stuff like that. So ergonomically, it just kind of works well within my studio space here. Now, one of the things you have to be careful with when you use a spaced pair is phase cancellation. So what is phase? Whenever you hit a snare drum, for example, the sound from that snare is gonna be hitting these two mic capsules at a certain time. Now, if these mics are in phase with each other, whenever you zoom into the waveforms in your DAW, you'll notice that the waveform should be flowing up and down in unison with each other, which whenever you play that back should give you a big full sound. If they're out of phase with each other, the waveforms will be crashing into each other, canceling out some of the sound, and it'll make it sound very thin and very weak. So you want to make sure that you get the overheads in phase with each other. And one way to ensure that is to use a measuring tape and actually measure from the center of the snare to each microphone to make sure that they're equidistant from the snare. And I've found that about 40 inches works well for my setup. It may be different for you, so you'll just have to experiment. But once I feel like I have them close, I record myself playing a little bit, then I go into Logic, zoom in on the waveforms, and make sure that they actually are in phase with each other. And then I move on. Another thing you want to ensure is that the overhead mics are in phase with the other mics on the kit. I've found that for me personally, I need to flip the polarity on both my overhead mics to keep them in phase with everything else. And I do that on the way in by activating the polarity switch on my preamp. If your interface doesn't have that option, you can use a plug-in inside your DAW to uh, flip the polarity. So you'll have to experiment uh, with your own miking setup to see what keeps all of your mics in phase with each other. But phase coherency is very important, so make sure you get that as good as you can. All right, another important thing to consider is the stereo image. Usually you want the kick and snare to be centered in the stereo image. And if you look at a drum set from the top, you'll notice that the center line through the kick and snare is a lot more diagonal than what you would think. So a lot of engineers recommend actually rotating your overhead mics until they're actually on the left and right side of that center line. I try to follow this principle as much as I can, but I found that if I truly follow it, it's gonna leave one mic kinda out over my cymbal and the other out over the floor where there's nothing. So I've kinda found a middle ground where the left mic is over the hi-hat and the right mic is kind of over the floor tom. This kind of gives me uh, a centered stereo image, but keeps the mics over important sound sources. So that's what kind of works for me. You'll need to experiment with that, but just you know, be aware of your stereo image, where the kick and snare are, and where your left and right overheads are in relation to that. Okay, now let's talk about the close mics. There's a million different ways you can mic a drum, but I found that just simple standard placements work well and they keep you from going crazy. So for me, that usually means about three fingers up from the rim with the capsule just slightly inside the edge, uh, pointing directly at the center of the drum. This is gonna give you a very natural balanced sound that works well for most situations. If you wanted more ring and more overtones, you could angle the mic down towards the edge 
and it'll give you that ringy sound, uh, which may work well for certain styles like jazz and stuff like that, but I personally never really do that. Now, just a quick tip. Whenever you're positioning the mics, don't do it from the drumming position. Actually walk around behind the mics so you can use your line of sight to make sure that the mics are actually pointing towards the center of the drum. It can actually be uh, a little bit deceptive to do it from the drumming position, so uh, keep that in mind whenever you're positioning the mics. All right, let's talk about the kick drum. I have a port on the front of my head, which allows me to put the mic inside the drum, which is nice because it can give you a variety of sounds that way, but I pretty much just use two different methods. If I want a lot of cut and a lot of attack, I'll put the mic further into the drum, pointing towards the beater. So that'll be good for like rock and metal, stuff like that. If I want a more balanced uh, sound with more low end, I'll pull the mic further back uh, towards the port, but still inside the port a little bit, and uh, that'll give me more of a balanced sound. And I basically just go back and forth between those depending on what I'm playing. You'll also see that I have a condenser microphone here on the outside. I basically just use that uh, for more low end reinforcement if I feel like I need it. Sometimes when I blend uh, these two mics together, it'll give me a more natural sounding kick drum, uh, which works well for some styles. I don't always use it, but it's nice to have if I need it. But, uh, you know, most of the times I just use the inside mic, usually further back uh, where it's balanced. But, you know, just keep it simple and you should be good to go. All right, guys, hopefully that gives you a better idea of how you can mic up a drum set to get good results. Mic placement is one of those things that engineers can get pretty crazy about, and I totally get that, but as a drummer recording yourself, sometimes you just have to keep it simple and stick to what works so you can concentrate on other things like tuning and your performance. So that's going to do it for part two. and part three, we're going to be looking at signal flow. So go ahead and subscribe to the channel, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Take care.